Hello YouTube, and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas, and we're here today starting a brand new build and review series for you guys on a frame that uh, it's still in prototype stages uh, called the Apex. So this was sent to me by a fellow named Alex out in Toronto, and he's been designing and building these frames, and he was looking for some feedback. So I figured that would be an awesome chance for me to bring you guys something new, show you guys that stuff, and uh, that way we can both, that way, that way we can learn about it together and give him some feedback on how the whole thing flies. So I was gonna do the Taco RC uh, cross thingy here, the plus configuration quad, but uh, we're gonna leave this for the next build and review series. So uh, make sure you subscribe if you wanna check this out. It's gonna be coming in the next few weeks, but uh, this week we're gonna be working on the Apex. So uh, let's take a look here at what the Apex is all about. Let's start talking about the components we're gonna use in this build so you guys can follow along. And uh, as always, it's gonna be broken up into three parts. So part one is gonna be about all the components. We're gonna go over them in a little bit of detail. And part two, we're gonna do the full build and go exactly through every step of the way, how to build the frame, how to put all the components in it, and uh, how to hook it all up. And uh, the last part will be the flight and the tuning. So I'll give you guys a little guide on that stuff as well. All right, let's take a look here. Okay guys, so let's take a look here at the frame. So the frame arrived to me in a little Ziploc bag, a couple of Ziploc bags, but I'm pretty sure that's not gonna how it's gonna be shipped. It's gonna be a little bit nicer when it's finished. But uh, right now, this is just a prototype for us to try out. So I received it just like this. I got all these parts right here that you see on the table. Uh, I got this nice little TPU canopy and uh, I got a little baggie with uh, a bunch of uh, pieces of hardware, some 10 millimeter standoffs and some nuts to put this whole thing together. So let's uh, take a quick look here at what we got. So we have here the arms, which are really, really thin and lightweight, and apparently they support a 4-in-1 ESC, or actually you can tape the ESCs on the bottom. They told me that's best to avoid prop strikes and stuff like that, so I might end up doing that. Uh, let's see here. It is four millimeter thick carbon fiber on the arm, so they should be fairly strong. Uh, four millimeters, it should be pretty good. He did send me an extra arm as well, and these uh, only have three mounting points for the, the motor right now. Now, uh, the Saturn Titan X that I did, that I built a little while ago, also only had three. It didn't seem to be a problem, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I've seen some that only have two, so I think this will still be very secure while saving a lot of weight on the arm. Now, this, uh, this frame that Alex sent me is designed to be a racer, so it's designed to go fast. Uh, he does have another design that is uh, a, a stretch version of this and B he does have one that is a freestyle rig as well So uh, maybe I'll do a build and review on that one later on But I really wanted to do the racer because lately I've been really into racing and, and just trying to go as fast as I can So I did get uh, five arms here. So we do have an extra one and it's a very simple design We have a bottom plate right here Okay, so the bottom plate where you can see there's a uh, uh, holes for the strap and uh, for your 30 millimeter flight controllers and all that two holes to hold the arms together so they're gonna bolt on just like that and uh, they're basically gonna have a, a little bit of a standoff and then this guy goes right on that right on top so it'll be like a sandwich like that with a 10 millimeter standoffs in between uh, the uh, pod right here the camera pod is gonna bolt on top of this uh, of this top plate that you saw right there, so it's gonna sit right there. So it's not, I'm not gonna say that it's similar, but I kinda of like that approach because it's sort of what I had going on with my uh, Mia X's. So we have, this one is a tall example, I have ones that are a little bit shorter, but anyway, we have the bottom plate, we have the FC, and then we have standoffs, and then a top plate, and on the top plate we have the camera sitting on it. And I kinda of like that, I've been really liking having the camera right dead in the middle of the quad, especially for racing, I really like the way it handles. So uh, I've kind of abandoned Stretch X and all that other stuff. I've gone back to flying mostly regular X and uh, having the camera be about as centered on top of the quad as I can have it. So I really like Alex's approach of having this little TPU canopy. It is uh, a nice print. It's super, super thin, but it seems very, very strong. It's incredibly flexible, but he told me once you bolt it all down, uh, it becomes a lot more rigid, and uh, especially when you have the camera inside of it, something like this here. Let me just uh, pop it in real quick. Probably hold better if it had the screws on, but uh, anyway, it would be something like that. However, if I use uh, a 2.1 camera, uh, sorry, 1.8 camera lens, it's gonna be a little bit tricky for me. I'm gonna have to get a little bit creative here to get the lens to be sitting in the right place. I might have to cut the canopy a little bit, which is what I did before, or uh, we'll drill another hole and mount it a little bit further up manually somehow. We'll see. I can figure something out, but uh, this is gonna be a test. 
Uh, his is designed for uh, 2.1 lenses, which is what a lot of guys tend to run for racing, but I really like the 1.8s. I, I believe they're better than the 2.1s, at least in my opinion. So uh, I always end up having to do something like that. So I'm not too worried. We'll modify this if we need be, or uh, maybe I'll get him to print me a new one and send me a new one. So, uh, yeah, pretty excited to build this. It seems like the frame is going to be super light. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying this out on a track and everything else. Uh, just before we go, let's check out the thickness here of the top plate. So top plate is two millimeters and bottom plate, I'm going to guess is about the same. Yep, two millimeters as well. And uh, before we go ahead and start checking out the other components, let's take a look at how much this stuff weighs. So we have the scale here. Okay, so all the carbon. Oops. Carbon, carbon, and now the canopy, that's 55 grams, and now we're just going to put the uh, the hardware there, so 67 with all of the hardware and everything else, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see it there, but 67, so not too bad, very, very, very light quad. If you guys have been following along, I've been really liking the light, light as hell builds because the Doberman turned out to fly super awesome once I was able to get it tuned on RC5. So it's been doing great for me that way. So uh, I'm really looking forward to building another lightweight build like this. So let's talk a little bit about the components that we're gonna be using on the Apex to make this whole thing fly. So we'll start with the flight controller, which is the very trusty CL Racing F4 that I've been using on almost everything this past few days because it is a nice flight controller, integrated PDB, does uh, all the way up to 6S directly, it has a nice uh, back for the camera and a back for the VTX. So it's able to feed both very, very, very easily. Uh, it has all the pads are super nicely laid out. So on the bottom of the board, we have here all the radio signal stuff that you that you might need. Uh, telemetry and all that is over there. We have the battery cables down below, and then uh, on the top we have super easy power for the ESCs with the signal uh, pad right in between each uh, power pad. We have uh, all the stuff that you need for the VTX down below, including a pass through for the built-in OSD, and on the top we have a pass through for the camera and power for the camera as well. So I really like this board because it eliminates a lot of components that you usually need to add to a build to get everything to work and uh, it just flies really 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 nicely. Uh, RC5 on it is perfect. Uh, RC2 and 3 were great as well but RC5 is flying extremely well with this board. Has a built-in SD card as well so if you want to do your black box logging it's super easy to set up. So all around a fantastic flight controller with plenty of uh, processing power to boot. You can run 8 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz uh, loop times on this thing no problem with uh, as many features as you want pretty much. So I uh, definitely recommend CL Racing F4 and that's what we're going to be using on the Apex. Now uh, from then on we're going to be powering the motors through uh, the DYS XSD 30 amp which are the D-Shot uh, single ESCs that uh, DYS made. These are a little bit old and I wouldn't say that they're super cutting edge but they're BL Heli S. They have a D-Shot. It's all that really matters. They're not the BL Heli 32 but uh, honestly lately I've been sticking with BL Heli S because it's, it's a more proven technology. So we'll be using these guys because they're they're excellent, D-Shot 600 and all that stuff. We will be using the uh, DYS fire motors. Now these motors here I've come to like a lot. These are the 2206 2600 KV motors, which uh, I, I love them. They have a, a really nice punch. They're, they're fast, especially if you're using bi blades. So I really like them. They can usually do okay in crashes, though I've had one die in a single crash because it hit the bell and the bell just deformed on uh, deformed itself and it wasn't able to spin anymore so they're not definitely not bulletproof I don't think any motor is but for the price point and the amount of power that you're getting they're great and I, I love the purple I think it's pretty freaking cool so we'll be using this guy here on the apex as well now for the video system on the quad we're gonna be using the trusty HS1177 uh, I do have another um, what, uh, the Micro Swift here, but uh, I asked him to send me the HS1177 because that's what I prefer to use. I do love the image quality on the on the little run cam and everything else, and I'll probably start using it more in the future, but I have a lot of these here just sitting around, so I'm gonna make use of these while I can. Also, these come with the 1.8 lens that I really, really, really like. Uh, so HS1177 with 1.8 millimeter lens, we're gonna be using that for sure. And uh, for the video transmission side of things, we are going to be using the VTX-03 that we've used on quite a few builds right now. And uh, I'm just going to be replacing the stock dipole antenna with a nice uh, circular polarized so uh, it can be multi-GP legal in my chapters here. But uh, overall, super solid uh, VTX. The only caveat with it is that you need to feed it 5 volts and that it does get hot. So if you plug in your quad and you leave it on the line for too long, sometimes it will shut off. 
which is good because it doesn't burn out, but uh, it can cause you problems if you're trying to race and waiting for people. So uh, make sure you plug in last, <laughs> at the last second possible, because you don't want to leave this thing cooking out there at all. All right, guys, so there you have it. These are the components that we're gonna be using on this build. There's nothing too special in terms of the components that we're using, nothing too new. It's really about the frame. So these are proven components that I've used before and I know how they behave. So we're really gonna be testing out the frame and uh, how it flies and how this super light uh, tiny arm thing works out when it comes down to the time of building. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I hope you subscribe to the channel because there's more awesome content coming. We're gonna be doing the rest of this build and review in the next in the next few days, doing the part two and part three. And uh, I'm gonna be doing the uh, build and review for the Taco RC uh, Plus Quad as well in the next coming weeks. So you don't wanna miss that stuff either. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always guys, thanks for watching.